Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us, sentiment, mother T. Breaking news with integrity. So, sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely T TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers, I hope you guys are doing good today. So this Diddy situation is getting crazier and crazier. So if you guys don't know, the other day, Tony Busby, who is the main lawyer for a lot of the victims coming up against Diddy, um, he basically did an interview with TMZ and he stated that there were going to be more names being named. Um, they were contacting celebrities, people who were there, people who knew about the situation, people who took, you know, drugs or gave drugs to the, you know, victims and things like that. Basically, they want the folks who are involved to come out, confess their sins, or get ready to go do some damn time with Diddy, okay? So I want you guys to go ahead and watch this interview really quick. You said last week at the news conference that you would begin filing lawsuits as early as this week. Um, do you have plans to do so um, and do they involve celebrities? Do they involve just Diddy, people beyond Diddy? I think I'll let the lawsuits speak for themselves. Uh, I don't expect there to be anything, you know, everyone's focused on what's, what other celebrities were involved, um, you know, who's going to be named, who's going to be outed. I don't expect that to happen this week. Uh, I'm hoping to file some lawsuits this week. Uh, we'll, they, of course, will include uh, Mr. Combs and some corporate entities. Uh, but we want to make sure that that you know if we name individuals uh, beyond Mr. Combs that that we make sure that we've done our homework because it's going to create a firestorm. We understand that, so uh, we're going to make sure that we dot our eyes and cross our T's. Uh, Tony, you said something interesting there. You said I don't expect that to happen this week. So that sounds like there could be other people named, uh, other famous people named down the road. I know you said this is going to be a process over the next 30 days of filing these lawsuits. So are you saying not this week, but maybe in the weeks coming after this one? I would expect so. I, I really don't want to get in, in into a situation where people are, you know, if, if I don't file a lawsuit next week, then, you know, there's a, a that creates a media frenzy. The, the truth is, I, I want to be clear about something. Um, if you were attending one of these parties, if you will, and you attended attended before or you knew what was going to happen. That is, um, you knew that a particular drug was being used in drinks that was causing people uh, to be coerced and taken advantage of, and you were there in the room or you participated or you watched it happen and didn't say anything or you helped cover it up. Uh, in my view, you have a problem. And uh, as we file each one of these cases, we're going to make an effort to resolve them on the front end. But failing that, uh, we're going to file public lawsuits and pursue these cases aggressively. So uh, who will be named, when they will be named, all that will come out in due course. But the bottom line is, you know, I, I want to be clear about the scope of this. A lot of people attended these parties. A lot of people saw this activity going on. A lot of people uh, allowed it to go on, said nothing, didn't intervene, maybe benefited from it, profited from it. Uh, all of these individuals and entities, in my view, have exposure here. Are we talking about celebrities on the level of Diddy? I would expect so, yes. Have you sent any demand letters out to anybody other than Diddy saying, um, here's what you've done, we want to settle with you or we're going to file a lawsuit. Have you sent any to, say, other celebrities beyond Diddy? We have. And I want to, I want to explain that process because it's important. You know, in every single case, especially cases like this, uh, we collect our data, collect our evidence, do our due diligence, spend time with the victim. And then uh, because it's in the best interest of the victim, uh, we attempt to resolve these matters without the filing of a public lawsuit. And we have done that already. Uh, we've done that, I would say, you know, with a handful of individuals, uh, many of which you've heard of before, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, that's just the standard process that every lawyer in the United States who handles these types of cases uses because it's, it's, it's the right way to do it. But there are also people who want to jump on the gravy train and want to make money 
And that's got to be a big slice of what you're getting. I mean, it's not just automatically believing somebody because they say it. No, I think, Harvey, I think you're right. You know, I was born at night, but I wasn't born last night. Um, you know, you get 3,200 calls and that turns into 100 some odd clients. I think you see the process that we're involved in. We're doing a lot of vetting, a lot of due diligence. All right. So you guys just saw what Tony Busby had to say to TMZ. So then what ended up happening was yesterday there were six new lawsuits filed against Diddy. So this entire situation is insane. Basically, there were four men that came out against Diddy. One of them was arred by him as a minor. So these are assaults and rapes that have spanned over two decades. This entire situation is just very, very disturbing. All of the information that's coming out, the news is now covering it. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys this news clip. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Now to a new wave of lawsuits that are filed against Sean Diddy Combs. For the first time, the 54-year-old music mogul is being sued by a person alleging he was abused by Combs as a minor. Jerika Duncan reports on that and the other disturbing accusations, which we learned about yesterday. It's a growing legal battle for Sean Diddy Combs, who now faces six new civil suits alleging sexual assault, rape and sexual abuse. The suits were filed anonymously by four men and two women in a Manhattan court Monday. CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman. How significant is it to have six more civil lawsuits filed against Diddy at this time? It's highly significant because it not only shows that there are other alleged victims out there who are willing to file a civil lawsuit, but it also gives the prosecution more access to the possibility of having other witnesses who tell horrific stories. The accusations include incidents ranging from 1995 to 2021, taking place at locations like a department store stockroom, hotel, and an event space bathroom. Some involve Combs and his, quote, agents and employees using this container to insert drugs into alcoholic drinks at parties. One complaint describes an alleged incident between a then 16-year-old and the music mogul at one of his infamous white parties in the Hamptons back in 1998. The suit claims shortly after the two met, Combs abruptly told him to drop his pants as a way to prove himself, then molested him, allegedly asking, don't you want to break into the business? Oh, In response to these latest allegations, Combs' legal team says the barrage of filings were clear attempts to garner publicity, adding, in court, the truth will prevail. Mr. Combs has never sexually assaulted anyone, adult or minor, man or woman. Following his arrest in September and arraignment for a sex trafficking and racketeering case, Combs remains behind bars at a Brooklyn detention center. The lawyer representing the alleged victim says they are just a handful of at least 120 accusers that have come forward and that more lawsuits are expected. The U.S. Attorney's Office could investigate these civil cases and ask for those deemed credible to testify in the separate criminal trial, which, as you all know, is slated uh, for me. Hmm. All right, so you guys just watched the news clip. So like I said, these new set of allegations are very disturbing. You have a woman who said, who said she was raped by Diddy in 1995 in a bathroom. You had the young man who was 16 back in 1998. Um, he went to an all-white party in the Hamptons where Diddy basically said, hey, if you want to break into the music industry, this is what you need to do. So again, like we've been saying here for years, the industry is very demonic. It's very, very dark, you know, and more and more information is steadily coming out. Now, what's even crazier is if you guys remember, Shig Knight did that interview with um, Chris Cuomo. And in that interview, he was talking about this weird egg ritual, right, where they want men to put, you know, hard boiled eggs up their ass. And if they breaks, that means they're not ready. So I want y'all to go ahead and watch this Shig Knight interview. Let me go ahead and refresh your memory right here. Well, number one, <laughs> luckily, I wasn't, I wasn't their first short, their second short. I wasn't their first short to be at those freaky parties. But you know what they show. They used to have a thing in the industry, right? And the sad thing about it, I don't like missing that Usher. I don't like missing Justin Bieber. I don't like missing all these people that everybody knows what time it is. So at the same time, in... Uh, 
they have a joke. They never played this joke with me. And they used to walk in the end school office. They'd go back there and they'd be like, hey, we passed the test. I said, we haven't did the test. One dude said, well, don't say that in front of Mr. Knight because he's going to take an offensive and hurt somebody. I said, well, whatever it is, I probably would take an offensive when somebody would get their ass What You know, that was me in those days. They used to have these guys, they used to call it the ball egg test. They used to take a ball egg, a raw ball egg, and have those guys put their pants down and bend over and they stick it up their ass. The eggs break, they say they're not ready yet. They ain't put enough work in. This is Hollywood. So everybody want to go act like they don't know what's going on. Hold on a second. But sure. you just look, that's sure. you got to do. I have, I have never heard of anything like that. So... If I haven't heard about it, just assume a lot of people okay, haven't heard that before. Okay, but you think stop, it's on stop, video? Stop for a let's, stop, let's stop for a second. Go ahead, sure. Yeah, listen, and also, have you ever been to any puppy parties? No. You sure they had a long time to think about it. But if you haven't been in those butt naked parties, even some of the preachers been in those parties, and they weren't on their knees praying for God. All right, so you guys just saw that Shig Knight interview. So now what's even crazier is I started putting two and two together. And I remember The Rock, he went viral maybe a few months ago for talking about, you know, what he likes to do at parties. And I thought it was really strange because he was saying, it depends on if it's a kid party or an adult party. And if it's an adult party, he likes to do things with grapes that don't involve his hands or feet or mouth. It's just a really weird interview now that all this information is coming out about Diddy. So go ahead and check this out. Right now, my publicist is like, please, God, don't say any more. What's my party trick? Hmm. It all depends on what kind of party it is. If it's a party for little kids, I could transform into Maui. They all start to gather around. I know it's a lot, the hair, the bod. When you're staring at a demigod, I make my pecs bounce and the kids go crazy. It's awesome. It was an adult party. Well... <laughs> with tequila, I do this thing where I can pick up a grape. Not with my hands, not my feet, not in my mouth. Right now, my publicist is like, please, God, don't say any more. Don't, please. All right, so y'all just watched him talk about his quote unquote party tricks. So I would not be surprised if The Rock may be, you know, one of these celebrities involved in this fuckery because let's not forget his Saturday Night Live skit that people thought was funny. I don't, I don't see how this even made it to national television. But remember, he was a mad scientist and he invented a pedo robot that went around molesting children. Uh, you see, it's powered by solar rechargeable fuel cells and it costs pennies to manufacture. Uh, and it can, theoretically, uh, molest twice as many children as a human molester in, quite frankly, half the time. Um, so uh, do I win the contest? I think that, uh, so they called it, you know, this came out seven years ago and they called it the most evil invention. But nothing about this was funny. I remember a lot of people being disturbed about it. And now that I'm hearing his little party tricks, you know, oh, it depends on if it's a kid's party or an adult party. And, you know, I eat grapes with no hands and feet. Now I'm giving The Rock the side eye because now I'm remembering you were in this skit with this molestation robot. And I don't understand how people even thought this was funny. So anyways, long story short, on top of The Rock and, you know, his weird party tricks, People also found pictures of Russell Brand. Now, Russell Brand, as we know, used to date Katy Perry. And, you know, he's not woke. He's now, you know, conscious and he has a YouTube channel. It was demonetized not too long ago. But it's very interesting that that basically Russell Brand is in pictures with Diddy holding an egg. My thing is, if you're at a party, where did the egg come from? I just feel like Diddy's been playing in our face for years, and we were just now noticing. Oh, I'm sorry, Pops, you okay? Ah! 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 Crazy. I love this game! He's Jeffrey. Let's go! Bye! No, I don't think so. He's right on the I'm gonna run so fast in my life! I'm going! Run all the way back to LA! Do I go in case enough? This is the long way! On top of that, this next clip, I've never seen the movie, but it's giving everybody in the industry new except us. Two traveling together? Yeah. Mind coming in the back for a quick exam? Let's come in. 
I need you to put this into your bottom hole. What? Put this into your rectum. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What the fuck? What are you doing? We're in the middle of the airport. It's a necessary part of your job, Aaron. Don't be complicated. Don't do it. Don't do it. No. Put it in that Stop. 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 Aaron, if you don't do it, I ain't gonna do the concert. I'll just get on a plane and go back to London. The only logical thing to do in this situation is to put this deep in your arsehole. He wants me to put drugs up my ass and I don't know what to do. Then you put the drugs up your ass. What's the problem? Please don't make me do that. This is the opportunity that you've been waiting for. You are now in the power position. You hold all the power in your ass. He will do whatever you want him to do. Isn't that enabling him? Yes, that's what we do. It's only a little bit of hair long in your ass. Nobody's gonna die. You know what you signed up for? Actually. Jonah, he's hilariously funny. I know him already, so he was, he's a, it's a buzz to work with him. Diddy's new to me, right? He looked after me. He took me on an enforced holiday to mm. Vegas. He's a very intense man because he's, I think he come from nothing and now he's very, very powerful. People that do stuff like that, they're intense. Mm. Now, I like him. He's very influential. Say that you don't want to do something and Diddy does want you to do it. It's really hard to not do that thing. Is it the mind fucking or? It's a bit like the mind fucking. Mm. Like, he's very influential. Like say, like, like, say Diddy went, could you pick me up from the airport? I've got back from holiday, or I'm going away. Would you feed my fish? And really, he didn't want to feed his fish. Oh, how much fish food you put in? <laughs> He'd still do it because you think, oh, don't upset him. He's an influential person. Mm, I got it. I got it. I got so it. So he's laugh. He's a good laugh. But if you like, imagine you get very friendly with him. He might ask you for loads of favors, and then you can't say no to him. That's my worry because I've become friends with him now. What if he starts? Oh, I pick us up from the airport. Feed the fish. Can I borrow your vacuum cleaner? It's going to be pressure. It's gonna kind of become his bitch. I don't want to be nobody's bitch. I've worked too hard in life. <laughs> not even Diddy's bitch. That's the problem. Russell Brand is not gonna be Diddy's bitch. Nobody's bitch. But I can catch him. It, it's you know like why would you be holding an egg? And it's so creepy to see this picture of them holding this egg after what Suge Knight has said. I think there's gonna be a lot of names in this lawsuit. A lot of celebrities are running scared. They're nervous. You know, this has been an ongoing secret in the hip hop industry, all this nastiness that's going on. Now going back and looking at all these clips, it's just weird, the whole situation. But now what's even more crazy, right? So Mo Prem, who is Tupac's half-brother, he did an interview about four days ago with Pierce Morgan. And so Pierce Morgan was asking Mo Prem, like, you know, do you think that Diddy had something to do with the death of Tupac? And Mo Prem was like, you know, we don't know for a fact. We're trying to search for answers. Like I told y'all during my live stream, the lawyer that Jay-Z and Beyonce handled to go against Pierce Morgan is also the same lawyer that the Tupac estate hired to investigate Diddy to see if he has ties to the killing of Tupac Shakur. Because per Keithy D, he says that basically Diddy paid for the hit. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys this clip of Mo Prem. Go ahead and check this out. Tupac, my brother, was king of the hill, top dog, king of rap. And with it comes a lot of jealousy. Oh, wait, maybe, maybe I said it's with him because he got Tupac killed. That's pretty direct there from 50 Cent. Yes, it was. <laughs> you know, and I know, that everyone believes that Diddy was involved in both these shootings. That is what the streets have said for 27 years. We all were familiar with all the rumors and stuff. I said, yeah, let me talk to him. What did he say that day when he called you? You know, I have my guys with me, Thug Life guys, and uh, we heard what he had to say. He basically said he ain't have nothing to do with my brother's murder. We don't, we don't talk about things that are nonsense. You think he was lying? Quite possibly, and it's kind of looking that way. Here we are 27, 28 years later. The theory involving him is quite high on the list. Our family, you know, we, we still suffer. He was all wrapped up, but he, he was still shaking the bed. He really wanted to tell me something. I'm assuming it was something that had to do with the hit. I get the feeling quite strongly that you don't believe Diddy. I don't think you believe a word of him. It seems like he got a whole bunch of power, like absolute power. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. 
All right, so you guys just saw the clip of Mo Prem. Now, what's even more crazy is that as of an hour ago, I was laying down minding my black ass business, and this fool Diddy literally can't stop, won't stop, won't take a break. The lawsuits won't stop. He done did too much dirt that all this shit is coming back to bite him in the ass, okay? Because the lawsuits that keep coming out against him are getting crazier and crazier. And obviously he thought that he could just get away with just doing any and everything to anyone. So check this T. This woman is coming out and she is naming her name. She's now coming in as a Jane Doe. Her name is Ashley Farham. And she is saying that Diddy basically gang raped her with a TV remote because she basically dissed him and said that she feels like he had something to do with Tupac's death. So this entire situation is crazy. Mo Prem was just talking a few days ago, and now as of an hour ago, this woman is coming out and saying that Diddy art her with the remote control. I'm going to go ahead and read this to you guys. So they're saying here, Diddy used a TV remote to rape a woman as payback for her telling him that she believed he had something to do with Tupac's murder. TMZ exclusively reports that the plaintiff, Ashley Farham, claims that the assault occurred as a form of payback for comments she made about Diddy and Tupac during a call with the Bad Boy record founder. According to the lawsuit filed by firm's attorney, Ariel Mitchell and Sean Perez, the incident traces back to February of 2018 when Farrah met a friend of Diddy's at a bar. During their interaction, the friend initiated a FaceTime call with Diddy. Farrah, unimpressed, allegedly suggested that Diddy might have had a hand in Tupac's tragic murder in response, Diddy allegedly became hostile and warned her that she would pay for that remark. Farham's lawsuit details an elaborate setup that took place about a month after the FaceTime call. She claims that the friend invited her to his Orinda, California home, where Diddy unexpectedly appeared. The suit alleges that Diddy threatened her with a knife and suggested he would give her a Glasgow smile in retaliation for her Tupac comments. The complaint also names Christian Quorum. Remember, that's one of Diddy's handlers, one of his fixers, a consultant for Diddy who, report, who was reportedly present during the incident. Farm alleges that Quorum advised Diddy against facial violence implying that Farham's appearance was valuable for other, more sinister purposes. The lawsuit describes a horrifying scene where Farham was forcibly undressed, coated in an unknown liquid, and then assaulted with the TV remote. Farham claims that Diddy also attempted to insert an object he referred to as an IUD when that allegedly malfunctioned. The, the TV remote was used instead. She further asserts that the assault escalated to involve two other men, resulting in a series of, of brutal attacks that left her physically and emotionally traumatized. After the attack, Firm says she found herself alone inside the house while Diddy and his associates allegedly smoked in the backyard. She managed to recover enough strength to grab a knife and try to leave, but not before another encounter with Diddy. In her claim, Firma says that Diddy offered her money to keep quiet and attempted to intimidate her by, by suggesting he had influence over law enforcement and could harm her family. He even allegedly showed her a live video feed of her sister's home as proof. In a particularly unusual twist, Farm states that Diddy called his mother Janice Combs during the confrontation. According to Farham, Janice dismissed her allegations and implored her not to harm her son. Once again, protecting her big dick deviant son like usual. Following this, one of Diddy's associates allegedly fired a gun, which Farham says ultimately allowed her to escape. She claims she fled the property and sought help from neighbors who called local law enforcement. Farham alleges that she reported the assault to multiple police departments, including those in Contra Costa County and Walnut Creek. Despite her reports, she claims no active investigation was launched by any agency, leaving her without justice or resolution. So as you see, the case of Diddy is getting more and more twisted by the day. This entire situation is insane. And the fact that Janice, you know, my son didn't do anything wrong, Combs, she's saying that she was involved and Diddy called his mom after brutally raping her is insane. So like I said before, this Diddy situation legit can't stop, won't stop. 
It's extremely disturbing, but I want to hear from you guys. I want to know your thoughts and opinions on the latest lawsuits against Diddy. How do you guys feel about the whole egg situation? Because people are not putting two and two together. And these celebrities like Russell Brand, they're starting to get the side eye from people. And let's not forget, Russell Brand has a lot of SA cases against him as well. We ain't forgot Russell, okay? And then last but not least, let me know how you guys feel about this latest case where this woman is saying that Diddy basically art her with the remote control. Do you feel like her case has merit? And do you feel like Diddy has some Something to do with the Tupac situation because again a hit dog will holla she said something to him and this was his response to not murdering Tupac that's insane to me but I look forward to reading y'all's comments down below make sure you guys hit this video with a like feel free to share the video enjoy the rest of your evening and I'll talk to you guys later deuces if you want the latest news in the streets join us sentiment for the tea breaking news with integrity so sir your friends and your family it's the lovely TV show bringing you good tea and good vibes it's the lovely TV show be sure to share like and subscribe